Hey y'all, welcome to the Crafty Cove. My name's Missy. If you are a subscriber here, thank you. If you're not and you like farmhouse decor on a Dollar Tree budget, please consider subscribing. I would appreciate it so much. Today I am part of the Spring Has Sprung open playlist. I'm so excited about it and we're going to talk about it in just a little while. But for now, let's just get right into it. DIY number one. So for this first DIY, I'm going to be using a 14 inch wreath form from wreath ring, I guess it's called, from the Dollar Tree and three rectangle tablecloths. I'm using yellow, a baby blue, and a white. First thing we're going to do is, of course, open up these tablecloths. And when you open them, I do not even unfold them. I just take it out of the package or I don't unfold them all the way, I'm sorry. And what I do is I start to like, unroll it i guess is what you would call it it's already uh folded up and these are the perfect rectangle sizes so what i'm going to do is i'm going to again open it up and i'm going to start cutting on the lines between the rectangles i end up cutting eight uh rectangles out of each of the tablecloths sorry i lost my train of thought there y'all Sorry about my lighting here. This was a really nasty day and I was I was by a window, but the lighting just goes in and out. So I do apologize for that. But again, we are just going to cut out eight squares or no rectangles from this tablecloth. And I just use the seam um, where they're folded as a guide to how I do this. So we'll do this out of all three of the tablecloths. See that lighting? It's just going all weird. I guess the sun must have went in <laughs> during that shot. And then you'll see it lighten up again. So again, I do apologize for that. So after we get all of those eight cut, now we're going to take each rectangle and cut some strips out. I can't tell you the exact amount of strips because it depends on how thick or thin that you cut them. And I kind of go on a medium. I do some a little thinner, some a little thicker. It doesn't really matter. I promise you it all turns out in the end and it looks great. So however many strips you think you may need. Now I slowed it down for a minute because when I cut them, they, it made four layers. And what I'm going to do is separate the four layers into two different layers. So there's two layers in each layer. Does that make sense? <laughs> two tablecloth pieces in each layer. And I do that for all of these strips and I do it for all three of the colors as well. Same exact thing. After we get that finished, we are going to start tying it onto our wreath form. I tied the first three on. I'm going blue, yellow, white. And I take again, one, I'm gonna call it a bundle of two layers and, or I'm sorry, of two tablecloth pieces together, making one layer. And we're going to tie a knot and then tie another knot. You don't want to pull too tightly because you will rip your tablecloth, especially if they are from the Dollar Tree. Don't worry about um, them not being real, real tight yet because we will remedy that here in a little while. But again, I'm just folding, or I'm sorry, I'm just tying a knot and then one more knot, a double knot on them. And we're going to use some hot glue here in a little while just to um, get them to be more compact together so they're not sliding all over the wreath form. And again, I do blue, yellow, white. So I'm going to let you just watch me here for just a minute how I am getting all these tied on. And then I'll come back when we're ready to use some hot glue.
Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push them all tightly together, and then I'm just going to put a little dab of hot glue right there, and it just keeps them all pushed together. Once you get all of them on here, it doesn't move around a lot anyway, but I just do this at various points, just when I feel like I need a little bit of hot glue to keep, give a little stability, so you just do it whenever you want. I only do this inside ring. If you want a fluffier wreath, you can do the inside and the outside ring, but this was perfect for me. So once I get all of our tablecloth pieces glued on, we're going to take one of these little hangers from the Dollar Tree, and we take off the jute string and the little B. It's a 3D B, and I end up, I go ahead and take that off. I do have to use a butter, butter knife. I have no tools here with me. So, <laughs> that's how we get that off. And please be careful. Try not to do this, but it's the only choice I had today. Once you get that top layer off, the rest of it just peels right off. Now, you can see that I decided, at first, I wanted this to be the scallion green color, and it just did not go. So, I went back with Silver Linings uh, Waverly Chalk Paint and painted two good coats on our little, I don't know what you call this here, our planter, <laughs> whatever you call it. And then after I get that finished, I go through and put some glue, hot glue on the sides and I go ahead and go all the way around this piece with some moss and then cut it off to the desired uh, look that I want. Sorry about the out of breath. Y'all know I suffered with the dreaded virus last week and um, I, or if you didn't know I did. And I also have another bout of low iron, so I'm working on that. So please forgive it, forgive me if I'm out of breath. After we get that finished, I am going to stuff some little greenery from the Dollar Tree in there. These tulips are from Michael's. They were $1.99 a bundle, which was a great deal because it was a pretty big bundle and I just cut pieces off of it to put in there. Next, we're going to glue our jute string back on the back of the planter because I covered up the hole. We're going to make a little hole in our wreath and just tie that planter right on. The next thing I did, it still looked a little plain, but I didn't want to add any more flowers. So I just go ahead and take some jute string and I wrap it around my fingers a few times, tie it in the middle just to make a little bow, fluff it out, and then I do the same exact thing. I just open up a little spot on the wreath and tie it right on there. And I ended up doing three of those. So I hope y'all like this. I love it. I thought it was great for spring. Let me know what you think in the comments. So again, we have an open playlist, Spring Has Sprung, hosted by some of my wonderful friends here on YouTube, and we always have a Spotlight Crafter this month. It is Creative DIY with Mom Das. We host a challenge like this every month with Stephanie from Mama Can Make It, Tammy from The Rested Willow, and Amanda from Six Kids and a Glue Gun. And we have an amazing list of crafters in our playlist. Make sure you check it out, y'all. DIY number two for this DIY, I'm going to be using four of these frames from the Dollar Tree. They have no glass in them. They are just the frames and this um, background and a little clothespin. And what we're going to do is start taking all of these apart. All we're going to use at the moment is the frames. Make sure to save, or I saved the backgrounds with the words and the clothespins because we're going to use one of the backgrounds later and one of the clothespins later. And these are always great things to save for future DIYs. I love them. And then we go ahead and take all the prongs off the back. Of course, no tools again. So using my scissors here. After we get that finished, we're going to start gluing these together. We're just going to use hot glue for um, YouTube purposes and video purposes. And we're just going to glue two together and then two, glue the last two together and then glue all four together. I do run a bead of hot glue along the back of each of these after I get them glued together just for some reinforcements. If you can't tell, we are making a faux window. 
And after we get those glued together, we are going to go ahead and glue the two pieces together. I hope that made sense. Um, and we're just using hot glue again. We get those glued together and then we are going to take two of the wooden crates. Oh, I'm sorry. I take a piece of that backing and cut it down to use as some reinforcement on the back only because I did not have any popsicle sticks. Now we're going to take two wooden crates from the Dollar Tree, take the stickers off and glue those together. Our window is going to have a little flower box. Now we're just going to glue those two crates right to the window. And then we are going to take some white Waverly chalk paint and paint this entire piece. The picture frames, the crates inside and out, and just get it completely covered. I end up using two coats on the picture frames, but I only need one coat on the crates. After we get that finished, we're going to take some of this Buffalo check material that I got from the Dollar Tree. All I'm doing is unfolding it. This is the size. We are going to cut right up the middle of this and we're going to cut all the way to the end. We're going to stop about an inch before the end. We are just making a little uh, faux curtain for our window. Sorry guys, got a little out of breath there. I was talking a little too fast and <laughs> hopefully I'm going to get this iron all figured out and get to a place. Of course the COVID didn't help any. So, you know, it kind of set me back a little bit, but I'm getting there. And with your all's prayers, I know I'll get there quicker. So thank you for praying for me. Now we're going to take now we're going to take our little curtain and just glue it right to the window with some hot glue. I glue all along the front edge and then also on the top edge. Now we're going to take some jute twine and loop it over itself about three times and make some little curtain tie backs. The first one that I show you right here, it's a little hard to see what I'm doing, but I'm just basically tying it to the picture frame and to the material. And like I said, it's just a little tie back, I guess is what you'd call it. The second one, you can see a little bit better. Sorry about this angle right here. And then I am going ahead and gluing the top part of the material to the side of the picture frame. Again, looping it over on itself three or four times. And we're just going to tie it to the picture frames there and tie it right there. Tie the uh, little material back against the picture frame. Get it to the however you want it to look. After that, we glue our um, Close pin in the middle and put one of those little sayings there and that's it and here's our little faux window with flower box and now it's time for our comment of the week Rochelle Craig thank you so much she has been one of my supporters from the very beginning of my channel and I appreciate her so much if you'd like your comment highlighted just follow these directions our final diy is diy number three and this is going way back to one of my very first videos so that's why the video quality may not be as good on this this is when i was just learning so i'm taking four of these little picture frames and some chicken wire and we are going to take the picture frames completely apart and we are going to uh take those clips off of the metal and we're going to use two pieces of the metal in this we're making a little faux lantern and of course no tools around even at that point so i had to use a knife um, so what we're going to do is take all of the little prongs out of the frames and we are going to just staple some of the chicken wire onto the back of each of the four frames i just kind of figure out what size i need cut it off y'all i got this chicken wire at dollar tree a year ago and i so wish they would bring it back because i loved it and I can't find it anywhere. So anyway, I'm just stapling the top part of the, or stapling the chicken wire to the top of the frame, and then I'm going to pull it tightly down towards the bottom. So again, after that top one's finished, I pull it as tight as I can and staple the bottom, and then we go through and staple the sides. Again, we do this to all four of the picture frames. 
After that, I take my little clippers there and I clip as close as I can get um, to the staples to get all that excess wire off. Um, so, because we're going to need the space. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I wish the Dollar Tree would sell this chicken wire again. I loved it. Okay, so after we get that finished, we are going to start gluing our pieces together. We're just going to make a box. I use E6, E6000 and hot glue for this. And you have to hold it a little longer to get it to stick because that chicken wire and those staples but it it has a really good hold and it's still la it's still holding up and it's been almost a year since i've made this video or the first time so um it really did work it looks great still but we're going to do all four of the picture frames again and reinforce on the back the back side there of our frames and we are just going to make a box after that's finished we are going to take some round dowel rods from walmart and we're going to put those along the edges there where those gaps are. I just didn't like that look. I wanted it to look more finished. So we do that on all four of the corners. After we get that finished, we do the exact same thing on the inside of the um, lantern here. We go ahead and cut down our dowel rods and place those on the inside four corners as well. Now we're going to take some white Waverly chalk paint and paint this entire piece except for the chicken wire. So we get the frames, the dowel rods, all of that. I don't do the inside. Had I, If I were doing it today, I would do the inside also, but at this point in time, I did not do the inside. So I didn't even worry about going back and fixing that. After we get two good coats of Waverly chalk paint in white, we take some barn red from, I think folk art, and we're distressing it a little bit um, all over the lantern, again, except for the chicken wire. And then I go in with some silver lining and do another distress. I think it looks really cute, makes it look like chippy wood. I love how it turned out. Now, after we did all that, the chicken wire was a little too bright for me. So I take some copper metallic paint and just kind of run my brush over all of the chicken wire. Now we're going to take those two pieces that we saved. They each have, of the metal, they each have a little lip on them and we are gonna glue one to one side and one to the other side. That little lip helps perfectly to get these to glue down. On the first side, I used E6000 and hot glue. Um, I, and then on the second side, I decided to go, sorry y'all, I am screen recording this. So that is why <laughs> you see the different angles and all and the upside down words and all that, I apologize. But on the second side, I just go ahead and use hot glue on it, and it worked perfectly. So again, I'm just gluing a piece on each side to where they meet in the middle, and those little lips on there are perfect for that. Now we're going to glue those two lips together, and that is our lantern. Now we're just going to take some of that uh, same copper paint, and we're going to, I brushed over it at first, then I decided just to start dabbing it on, and I'm trying to give this different effect. Oh, what is that called? But anyway, we go ahead and dab on the copper color and then we're going to go in with some of that silver lining. And after we get all of the painting finished there, I love how this turned out. We're going to take some little uh, garland that I find in the wedding section at Hobby Lobby, make a little wreath and glue it right to the top and the front of our lantern. Then I take some of the ticking ribbon from the Dollar Tree and go ahead and tie a little shoestring bow and glue that right to the wreath. And y'all, that's it. Again, sorry for the quality of this, but I wanted to share this because like I said, it's been a year, one of my very first videos. And this is actually one of my favorite projects that I have ever, ever done. So I wanted to share this with you all. So here is our final result of our lantern. I just stuck a little candle in it. Here's one way that I displayed it. And then I also displayed it with a wreath around it. I love how this turned out. 
So here is the final reveal of all of my projects today. I hope you all enjoyed them. Let me know in the comments what you thought of them and which was your favorite. Don't forget to check out the link to the playlist in my description box. These ladies, each and every one of them that participate with us every month are so talented and I love working with each and every one of them. And I just want to say thank you again for all of your support. Y'all mean more to me than you will ever possibly know. Thanks for watching. Y'all come back now. You hear?